let's talk about how to get the answer to this problem. Note that we're looking at two different populations and that we take two samples from each of those populations. What we're interested in doing is finding the difference of the proportions of those two samples. So in the one sample we looked at a at 81 individuals and we had 37 successes. In the other population we looked at a hundred individuals and had 21, uh, 23 successes. Because we're looking at finding a confidence interval, we're looking at an 80 percent confidence interval, but because we're looking at a confidence interval we know the process that we're going to do. Let's just review what will happen because we're looking for a confidence interval. The idea in every confidence interval problem is this. We're going to try to estimate some population parameter by looking at, a, looking at samples. So we take a sample, we calculate that population parameter. In our case, the the population parameter is going to be the difference of two proportions. But we find this point estimate. I'm just going to call this x for right now. In, in our case it's really going to be a, uh, the difference of two uh, proportions. Then we look at either a z distribution or a T distribution. And the way that we decide whether we're going to use a Z or a T is this. If, if we have to use a sample standard deviation, the If we have to use information about the sample to estimate the standard deviation of the population, then we'll need to use a t distribution. If we know the population standard deviation, we'll probably be able to use the z distribution. And also, if the, if the sample sizes are very large, at least bigger than 30, then we may be able to use the z, z distribution because T distributions begin to get closer and closer to a Z distribution as the sample size gets bigger. So we'll worry about which one of these we need to, to, to use in a moment. In either case, whether we're using the Z or the T, the center of this distribution is going to be zero and any the Z or the T value is going to give us a measurement of how many standard deviations we need to be away. So there's a confidence level that we're looking for in our problem. We're looking at an 88 percent confidence level. But uh, whatever that is, we're going to put... So we'll center that confidence level right here. We want to have, in our case, 0.88 uh, of the of, of the total area centered uh, here. That's what the the confidence level will be there. So the total area out here in these two tails will be one minus that confidence level. So 1 minus that confidence level divided by 2 will be the area in each one of these tails. So this particular number right here on either the z or the t-axis, whichever one we're using, is going to give us, is going to tell us how many standard deviations away we need to be to have a confidence level away from our test statistic to have the confidence uh, interval that we're looking for. So in this discussion I'm going to call that number a critical value, CV. So to find this margin of error, 
how far up from the uh, sample statistic that we got and how far down we need to go. We'll simply need to, to find the margin of error. We'll just take this critical value, which is telling us how many standard deviations away we need to be times our whatever we were using for the standard deviation of this population up here. It'll either be an estimate that we're getting because of the samples, or it will be the population standard deviation that we already know, and that will be telling us whether we're using a Z or a T down here. So whether we're actually using the standard deviation of the population or we're using the standard error, the, if we're using the standard deviation of the population, then we'll be using a z-distribution most likely. If we're using the standard error or, the st or in other words, the standard deviation of the, of the sample, then we'll be using a t-distribution down here. But that's going to tell us how much we're going to have to add to, to this uh, sample statistic and how much we're going to have to subtract from it to get this confidence interval. Okay, so let's build the pieces that we need. Let's come back to our problem. Let's begin by telling R the pieces of information that we uh, that we know. We know the number of successes in the sample from the first population is 37 and the number that the n is 81 and of course 23 and, and 100. We're looking at a confidence level of uh, 0.88, 88%. But we're interested in proportions so we can ask R to calculate the proportions of each of these samples. So, so the sample statistic for the first population, P1, is going to be R1 divided by N1 and P2 is going to be R2 divided by N2. So our point estimate for the population P1 minus P2 is going to be our sample P1 minus P2. I'm going to call that PD for the, for the difference in the proportions. Now we, want to, we will want to know those Q values as, as well, so let's uh, which is going to just be 1 minus the P's, of course. So let's find the Q1 and the Q2. Now just as a reminder, we know that the standard error or the standard deviation of the sample uh, in a proportion is going to be the P, the square root of the P times Q divided by N. So we could find those two separate standard errors, but what we want is the standard error of the difference, so we need to look at some other theory for that. I'm, I'm not going to leave these two in the, in the script because I really don't need those. I'm just reminding you that we know that if we were just using, uh, if we were doing a, a confidence interval on just one uh, sample, then, uh, then that would be the standard deviation that we'd be looking at. But the standard deviation or the standard error for a two population uh, situation like this is the square root of, now notice that formula, that looks an awful lot like the standard error for the first population plus the standard error for the, uh, the, the standard variance for the first population and uh, uh, the variance on the second population. So we'll just take the square root of that sum. Then I'm showing the, you the rest of the calculations here. The confidence, uh, the, that critical value, remember that critical value is going to be this particular number in whatever axis we're going to, to need to work on. And we're going to be using, in this case, a T because we're using the population um, uh, standard error, the standard deviation of the, of, the, of the sample as our estimate for the standard deviation of the population. So we need to use a t-distribution and we want to find this particular value right here. So our critical value will be, be calculated as a minus 
quantile of t, we, we need to have a, well, let's talk about why that is. You see, if we used r to tell us the q norm, if we're using a z-axis, or the qt of, th of this particular value, of this particular value, it would tell us this quantile right here. So we will either be using a Q norm or a QT depending on which uh, situation we're using here, whether we're using a Z or a T. In our case, we're going to need use a QT, but if we ask for a QT of this value, we would get a negative number. We would like to have that would like to have the critical value that will be the negative of that negative number. So there we are calculating that critical value. It'll be a negative QT in our case of 1 minus the confidence level divided by 2. And the degree of freedom here, because we're using a T, we need to tell the degree of freedom. And the degree of freedom is going to be the N1 plus N2 uh, minus 1. Let me correct that. It's going to be the n1 plus n2 minus 2 because we've got the two populations. So that margin of error is going to be calculated as that critical value times the, uh, the standard deviation that we're looking at at the moment. Remember, that critical value is estimating how many standard deviations we need to be away to get this confidence interval centered. And so uh, our, our margin of error is going to be that critical value, the number of standard deviations away we need to be, times whatever we're using for the, the standard error, the standard deviation. So that's where we're getting that margin of error from. So that uh, uh, test statistic, the PD, in our case, minus ME is going to be the lower bound. And the test statistic plus ME is going to be the upper bound. So let's ask R to do those calculations. We're highlighting that and running the result. Now notice for grading the problem, the, the programmers said that we needed to round this to the nearest thousandths. So that's going to be a, one one, a point one one eight for the lower bound, and it's going to be a point uh, three three five for the upper bound. Okay, on to the next problem.